especially when it comes to like commentating and hosting shows. There's so many podcasts around the CrossFit space and then professional uh, commentating within the CrossFit games that comes from people just like you two who uh, saw that there was a path that was open. You were interested in, in pursuing it. You went for it. You made it happen. And now you're getting reps ahead of everybody else to the point where you become undeniable. And then when the time comes, you get uh, plugged in wherever you're needed. And if not, you are so well-versed as a self-sustaining uh, and self-resource production company that you, you get to run your own program. And uh, that is, it, it is exciting. And uh, I think this is part of the uh, development of the, the scene. And the fact that you're you're choosing to lead the way is, I I admire that. I think it's uh, epic. Yeah, it's it's crazy because I thought you know, I, and we just got a hundred subscribers. By the way, shout out to us. Uh, within four months, it's funny because you said April, you got involved with this, and in April we started this podcast, right? And the thing is, it was kind of like, okay, um, I envisioned myself we're going to get this attention, a certain type of attention, six months from now. Nope, happened like of the last month, and I was like, whoa. That was quick. We already got, uh, you know, we got, we got, we got uh, attention from Shout to Crackers Axe and Cross oh, yeah. One and 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 Renegade. Like they're just like okay, and they reposted the show and like, you know, it's it's pretty crazy because like I was like around that, you know, if I could predict it, it'll happen around December. It's like nope, it's happening now already. Oh okay, mm -hmm. well all right, that fast tracked everything. My plans, you know, my my predictions. So it's pretty crazy to know that like. We're out here doing this. And there's other shout out to uh, Domkey too. He does it on Twitch. But I think we're the only ones that really try to be uh, objective as we possibly can. And, you know, and hopefully as uh, we develop, you know, the production value goes up too as, as well. You know? Yeah. And I think it's important to, just like you said, I mean, uh, I know that Zach was uh, commenting on the last video and he said that you were misinformed and mm -hmm. just uh, be careful kind of thing. But it, that leads to more open conversation. I think yes. right now yeah. we need radical transparency, radical honesty. And um, yeah, we need to hold each other accountable because yeah. uh, at any point in time, I can be BSing you and just uh, telling you something that you don't know and you can believe it to be true. And then that right. can all of a sudden snowball into something yeah. that actually hurts the scene. I think right now it's the time to come together. And I think through conversation is the, is the best way to go. And the best way to come in is is uh, knowing that you know nothing and that you're here to learn and uh, to find your place and support where where you can and learn where you can. Yeah, that's it's funny because like you know when I covered my butt, you know I said this is what I don't know, <laughs> this is what I'm assuming to cover my butt. So like these aren't and you know and you know and I got certain I talked to certain people they're like but you have access to us why didn't you hit us up I was like do I okay you gave me the green light cool i'm gonna ask you guys you know i didn't know that i've been out of podcasting for like a year uh since covid you know yeah what I, mean? I mean we shouldn't take anything for granted i i think asking for permission is key and yeah. this is the time to double down on that i think right now where we are in the evolution uh of the expansion of of breaking is in a place where we uh must over communicate it's just the nature of it. We, we need to share more. We need to talk about it in a way where we express more vulnerability. I mean, I, I, I am at fault for this where I, I can sound so confident in something that I'm saying that people believe it to be true without double checking whether it's actually true. So it's like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't let people like myself come in here and tell you what's true and what's not true just because right. I, I sound confident or right, I, you know right. I may ha hold some uh, silly title that somebody right, else right. gave me. Right. Yeah. No, so that's, and, and it's very important. Yeah, it's very important. Like I said, that's th these are the things I'm talking about. Like as far as the the difference between this uh, behavior you used to have is like, nah, my crew, my thing, nah, I'm not showing you nothing. You know, then okay, now if we want to all grow, we have to open mind, open heart, right? Like that's the main thing right now. While still carrying and even weighing which cultural aspects of the culture should we keep and throw away. Do you know what I mean? Like, so we're still trying to find that out. Yeah. Well, I, I, I couldn't tell you because I, 
I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that, Jay? What do, you, what do you think? How do you feel about like the evolution of that? Hold up. Evolution of what? Uh, just, you know, what parts of the culture we should keep and get rid of? Like, do you, do you believe like there's certain things that that do need to be like kind of like pushed aside that it doesn't function? It doesn't have a service for the bigger scene, uh, bigger uh, scale of the scene? Mm, I think any behavior that, that goes against growth, um, I'm not radical against any, any witch uh, era or behavior as long as there's, there's growth within it and, and it's, it's moving the culture forward um, on the music and on the actual movement. What I want to see is, is whose lifestyle is going to be oriented towards longevity within the scene. And we see people like you, we see people like, uh, like Flowmaster, like Wicked. Um, yeah, n not many people their age are, are still practicing and, and, you know, participating in mastery within this art form. And the importance of that is, is, you know, what we know is it's infinite, right? We're, we're uncovering positions and transitions of the body. We're, we're evolving the understanding of, of human movement. And I would love Carl's take on this as well, com coming from a, a very strong movement base. Um, the art yeah. side, the yes. arts, the balance, yeah. balance out athleticism. Um, yeah. Well, I can, all I can tell you is regression is progression, meaning you, you have to go back to the fundamentals to continue to build into uh, new levels of performance, whether it's new signature uh, movements or styles or uh, even improving your execution in those, mm. in those movements. So regression is progression. That's that's the the first uh, thing to keep in mind is that fundamentals and the foundation is going to keep you winning for a long time. That is the essence of longevity. And uh, what's going to be very interesting, and I, I, I don't understand how people aren't really paying attention to this right now, but when the moment comes where breaking is in the Olympics, you're going to see a huge inflection point in the amount of breaking coaches that start coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be insane. It's I laugh. Yeah. I and laugh. you're going to, and you're going to see um, uh, people start to talk about breaking in a way where uh, they position themselves as subject matter experts hmm. and uh, are, probably within the scene uh not necessarily to be considered as that like if you saw me right now say i'm a breaking coach and i teach breaking specific movement you would feel a little weird about it right. well you're going you're going to see people like myself in two and a half years do exactly that mm. so where are you going to be that that's the question. Where's Ooh, the scene gonna be? Are you gonna? That's be ready a hot for that? take right there. <laughs> and that's my biggest. That's my biggest point that I'm trying to make here is that people like myself are gonna come in and position themselves as subject matter experts and are actually gonna take over what you have been working for for so long because they maybe are just a little bit more uh, open to the opportunity. They have developed a certain level of skill sets outside of breaking that allows them to speak to people in a way that uh, they can understand breaking. I mean, Jay Sol and I have talked about this a lot. It's how do you find the right vocabulary, the right language that makes uh, what you're teaching more inclusive, meaning uh, more understandable. And, and this is going to be the challenge. And how, how do we do this? And it's taking this concept of, uh, let's say you take a six step or a CC and you call that a code. It's finding language that is transferable. How do I make a CC or a six step interesting, compelling, uh, applicable or practical to somebody outside of breaking? That's when it starts to get interesting. And why does it get interesting? Well, because when you get somebody to understand a signature move of a signature style of moving, then what you, you get is people starting to buy in. They watch breaking and they recognize breaking. It's no longer people spinning on their backs on a piece of cardboard. Yes. It's now people executing a certain movement pattern that is recognizable and thus you can become a fan of. And I know you've talked about this profile. Yeah, and this is and where, and this is where it's like, yeah, I think it's, this is where, again, like 1992, 93, if you asked about Brazilian jiu-jitsu, be like, we don't know anything. Now, at least in the in the vocabulary, if I say, you know, if I talk about 
a Kimura, or I talk about a triangle, or I talk about, you know, pulling guard, there's going to be, it's, it's, it's part of the vocabulary now. For not, not for everyone, but definitely different from like 1993. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And people know when you're watching UFC and someone is mounted, people are excited to see the techniques, how they would, you know, they would get that guy into submission. People are on the know now. Before, when we first watched it, we were just like, what's going on? Now all of a sudden, you know, Royce Gracie put this guy in an arm bar and you're like confused. Well, okay. All right. He won? Okay. Now it's like, did you see that? Everyone in the crowd is now like, okay, he's mounted. He's doing he, he's doing this transition to get him in a guillotine. Like, stuff like that. It's now part of, you know, the norm. It's part of pop culture. And I'm, I'm excited to see when that's going to happen with us. Mm -hmm. You know what you're talking it, it, about i think it's 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 coming and it's uh closer than we think and my whole take is um be ready stay ready because the opportunity is there and uh i mean just talking about it from a, a career standpoint if you have Ooh. ever dreamt of becoming a professional breaker you can actually do it now if you right. have dreamt of uh, being a professional within the breaking space in a sustainable manner, you can actually do that. And I'm talking about not only coaching, but I'm also talking about media production, branding. I'm talking about event organizing. I'm talking yes, about uh, yes. uh, developing a sports agency. That's something that I'm yes. thinking about. And yes. I'm, ve I'm very transparent about that. Um, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, you know, we talked about this earlier before we started, when we first started the podcast, I was like, look, man, I always imagined myself to be the Joe Rogan of breaking, man. Like, you know, like that's like one of the goals. And I think it's very possible now that we're talking, you know, now that we're like, even just this, right? Like we had three viewers who fluctuate, but you guys are tuning in. Thank you guys for actually tuning in and watching us and hearing us talk because, you know, there's like, even though that's like a live streaming and shout out to uh, B-Boy Network for live streaming. Um, and I hit them up and they gave me the schedule. Here we go, so. snap and sunny. Oh, okay, let's, uh, let's continue that later. Yo, this is Shadow Rock and Profile One. And this is Jay Soul. And you're watching the Gearheads Breakcast. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell at the top for the notifications, and follow us on Instagram at Gearheads Breakcast. Peace, y'all. Peace.